So any questions you have about singing, singing is super good for you. So the health benefits of singing, even when you're not a professional singer, are huge. Uh, you get an endorphin rush. It's something that apparently they did this cool study that for people who had done some vocal training and they'd protect. The, that's why I love so much when you're like, you sound like an 18 year old when you're singing. I'm like, oh, because apparently it can have really nice mental health uh, impacts if you protect your voice. And apparently later on in life, like when we're in our 70s and, and 80s, if we're able to protect our vocal cords, um, you feel younger. Apparently that was a study that they did, that, that they feel healthier and younger. Uh, people who have done a little bit of vocal training and have protected their young voice. So if you're able to, do it. You don't have to be good. And, and everybody who sings... Um, if I play you my original demos from when I was a child, super bad, super bad. I don't know why, why when I looked at my parents, I'm like, I want to go to singing school. I'm going to audition for a singing school. I don't know why my parents were like, cool, you should do that because it was bad. <laughs> but it's just like going to the gym. We're talking about um, taking that rest after the gym because uh, you're a little bit sore in the body, but your vocal cords and all of the muscles that go into singing, all of those muscles are just toned and developed the same way you tone and develop your muscles for all of the other things you do in your life. So everybody can sing. It might not be very good right now, but it's just because you haven't toned the specific muscles uh, in your body to be able to sustain certain notes and, and, and use your breathing effectively to bounce between those different notes. So I don't, I don't teach singing. That's not something that I teach. Um, but I'm happy to share with you a couple of tricks that I've learned today. So if it helps you, um, go sing, sing in the shower, sing in the car, sing at the top of your lungs. It's really good for you, uh, mental health wise, even if you don't, you don't sing professionally. So Blanca, thank you for the follow. I'm seeing Pio, my favorite ponies in the chat. <laughs> You're gonna, I sound like a 60 year old. There are still things you can do to protect your voice, even after you've damaged it. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna teach that. We're gonna learn that today. Don't worry about formal education. <laughs> Hi, Eric. Eric Drums, welcome. Welcome. Yeah, no. I don't, I don't teach singing, so I'm just going to teach you some things that, that I learned in my time studying, studying singing. So the first thing I want you to do, everybody, I want you to stand up. If you're sitting down right now, I want you to stand up, stand up, and I want you, I want you to put, put your hands right here where your rib cage is, and you can, you can feel your tummy right here. And, and right in there, you've got your diaphragm muscle, and that's the most important muscle for you to be able to sing. And so that's why you see me too. I've got a standing up station, not only for my enormous back problems because I'm so old, uh, but it's for singing as well. I probably couldn't be uh, protecting my voice the same if I was sitting for hours on end streaming. Like we're streaming for like four hours now. It's complete madness. <laughs> so I want you to stand. <laughs> Siler already quits because you have to stand. <laughs> Johnny and Heidi, uh, you guys just recently made partner and that's so amazing. And I'm so happy for you because um, I found your story when you'd first joined Twitch coming over from Mixer. And I know that must have been so hard. And so I'm so happy that you found uh, so much success on a new platform because you guys are amazing. So thanks. Thanks for coming back to the stream. Okay. <laughs> it's like everyone's like, I'm quitting because I have to stand. No, you got to stand. You gotta stand. So you're gonna put your hands here on your ribs and I want you to just to breathe in. So take a big deep breath and I want you to feel if your stomach is coming out. Because what happens is most of us are super lazy breathers actually, which is hilarious because I'm gonna say you're lazy because you're breathing with your lungs. But it's true, that makes you lazy. <laughs> so, so when you're breathing, you don't want your shoulders to be going up and down. And that's going to take a long time. So it probably took me about a year and a half of practicing to try to figure out what it felt like to breathe with my diaphragm versus my lungs. So you're going to try to not have your shoulders going up and down. So even put your hands on your shoulders and see, are my shoulders going up and down? And that might be the case. And that's okay. It'll take you some time. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> what is breathing? Sad face. <laughs> There's another technique to breathe. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so are, are your shoulders going up and down? Is that why you're yelling at me right now? <laughs> yeah.
Yes, you have to be okay. You have to be okay with your belly just hanging out. It's okay. Your belly's supposed to hang out when you're singing. You're not supposed to to be sucking everything in, chest out. No, you don't want that. You want to use your belly to help you protect your vocal cords. I even learned to breathe wrong. No, it's true. And a lot of us, we just breathe that way. And it's okay because it takes time and focus to, to work on this specific muscle. Uh, if there's any swimmers, if any of you swim, you probably had to learn this technique too because that's what's, it's the same muscle that's going to help you um, with, with, with breathing and holding your breath for a longer period of time. So I want you, I want you now, if you've noticed your shoulders are going up and down, I want you to practice just with your hand. And you can probably see my stomach now. With your hand on your stomach, just breathing out. And you want to push your hand out. So you want you want your hand to be to be coming out. Can you guys can you guys see my belly? <laughs> is my belly really 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 <laughs> really obvious? Can you see how big it is? <laughs> what are you showing us, Savvy? I'm showing you breathing for singing. That's what we're that's what we're that's what we're learning. We're doing a live learn on how to breathe. <laughs> yes, no, it's an alien that's coming out of my belly. That's that's what's happening right now. As I breathe, it's the alien pushing its face out of my abdomen. <laughs> and so it's going to take you a few months to develop that. But every time you're laying on the couch, I want you to grab something heavy. And I want you to practice trying to push that thing up. Usually a textbook's the easiest thing if you've got like a big book hanging out at home and just practice pushing that because that's going to be the most important part. Get in my belly, Dom. It's a great, it's a great time for you to come, come on the stream. Half of the people here came on stream when I was running back and forth with the cowbell and now the other half are coming on and I'm like, can you guys see this right now? <laughs> no, we're doing, we're doing a tutorial. We do tutorials, we do tutorials on on Sunday. So that's going to be the most important thing you ever need for singing. Your breathing is the most important thing and it's going to solve so many problems that you find. If you're having problem holding a note, if you're having problem controlling your vibrato, if you're having a problem skipping between difficult intervals, all of that is related to breathing. Every single one of those things. So if you learn to breathe this way too, not only the health benefits of singing through all the fancy endorphins you get in your brain, the vibrations going throughout your body, it's also going to help you with your breathing long term. And all that extra oxygen is really nice. Apparently, according to a lot of studies as well, singing is an activity that uh, will, will give you more, more breathing benefits than a lot of uh, high cardio exercise as well. Just, just go and sing. Just go and sing a bunch. So how, have we figured out how to push, how to push our, our bellies out? Red, my dog's looking concerned at me. That's good. That's good. Dom, are you breathing with us? Did you stand up? Did you check? Did you check? Because this is good for people who speak all the time too. This is good for us streamers who are talking for hours on end. If you want to try to reduce vocal strain, we don't want to be breathing with our shoulders. We don't want to be breathing with our lungs. We want to be using this muscle to help bring the air in. And then that also helps you control how you're going to bring the air out. Lying forward on an exercise ball is awesome too. Okay, awesome. If you've got an exercise ball, do that. I've got one of those up, up, up upstairs as well. <laughs> it's like a trick you learn in dance. Clutching your butt fixes everything. <laughs> I wouldn't, I don't, it might work for dance, but clenching your butt does not help with singing. <laughs> Oh, that visual, though. <laughs> I'm going to go to the gym and just stand in front of the mirror. You're just like, okay. And just push your, and just push your diaphragm out. That's all you're going to do. That's all you're going to do. <laughs> you're on a swim team. Yes, you are doing it naturally, Pio. We were, we were just mentioning as well. Anybody who swims has learned this technique as well. <laughs> Instructions unclear. <laughs> Can't sing, <laughs> but can do a button clench. <laughs> oh my goodness! It's trying to teach through a comedy show. That's what's happening right now. That's what's happening. So, are we all breathing? You just take those big breaths. 
and you just got to push with your stomach. And then as you get comfortable with that, also get used to um, clenching the muscles so that you can push all the air out really quickly. So practice that as well. So you're just breathing in and breathe out really quick. You just got to push out all the air. So then you're, you're able to start controlling the muscle and that's what's going to help you with singing long term. So if you find I sing and then all the birds fly away and the dogs start howling, that's a pitch issue <laughs> and you can fix a pitch issue just with your breathing. So if I'm going to start and you're always going to warm up your voice before you do this and, and the best way and the most gentle way for me, I find, is to hum just for a little bit before I'm going to start practicing different vowels because when you, when you think about singing, enunciation is really important. So if I'm just going to start... Oh, I've got to turn that on. There we go. Please don't let it be harpsichord. Okay, it's not harpsichord, and that's good. Mm-hmm. And I always go lower first because it's a little less challenging for my vocal cords than just immediately singing in your lady voice. Don't don't ever start that way. Don't start that way. I want you to to, to start humming, and I want you to push to the deepest end of your range. And that's how I always start warming up because it's just easier. And, and you just p- keep pushing. And, and the more you do that, the more you do those scales down, uh, the easier it's going to be for you to stretch your range long term. So just doing little scales down. Mm-hmm. Going up a semitone. Mm-hmm. 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 Bubblegum nihilus, especially the basses. Don't start with your lady boys. And then as you are feeling more comfortable and you're starting to feel warmed up, then you're going to start doing vowels like What's another vowel? (laughs) Eric. the weirdest tutorial of my life what's going on the butt clenching is not part of it <laughs> don't listen to the people in the chat I actually do because it's hilarious harpsichord ridiculous that you would give harpsichord harpsichord is not welcome here dunder harpsichord is the worst instrument <laughs> and then my favorite scale is as i'm starting to get more comfortable is starting th- to Go a little bit faster with the in-between notes, just as you're warming up to get ready. So just doing that scale, it helps to go in between notes. Because you also don't want to be scooping all the time. You want to get to a point where you can sing clear between one interval and another. You don't want to be just like, ah, dear, no, 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 no. Like you need some clarity between that. You don't want it to sound like that. You want to be able to. And sometimes throwing in some staccato there so you can just actually continue to, to strengthen that muscle. The basement lady told me to. Sorry about the mess. Oh my god. <laughs> and tutorial over, cause uh <laughs> And we're all getting hungry because of all the breathing. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a normal that's a normal thing too. There's a reason why we're so we're so hungry post stream as well. Uh, it takes it takes a lot of effort to produce the sound of your voice. So those are those are the warm-ups that I do uh, for those of you that were asking. But that's what's going to help you with things. So when you think about, uh, if I want to be able to control the vibrato, I'm going to do that using this muscle in my body. So I can sing a clean note. I can just go, uh, or I can add extra vibrato and just go, uh, and that's just me kind of bouncing between. So you, you want to be careful with how much vibrato you, you actually add because you are going off note when you're adding vibrato. And you just use that muscle. And that's what controls the vibrato at the end. 
So practice doing both. Practice singing clean with no vibrato, and then practice singing with the extra vibrato. <laughs> no, it's good. You should warm up, Sabby. Especially streaming for hours on end. Just because I want you to be able to protect your voice. Otherwise, if you go in and, and, and your body's not ready, it's the same thing as like, I'm going to go from nothing to I'm just going to run a marathon right now. And so it, it's okay in the, in the interim, but long term, you want to be able to protect your voice. Uh, and I'm also teaching. So I'm typically teaching for rooms of up to 60. So I'll sometimes be in these massive rooms with no microphone, uh, teaching for 15 hours a week plus, plus performing. Uh, and I don't lose my voice. And it's just this magical muscle that you have. So absolutely use your diaphragm. The diaphragm, <laughs> it is, it's all, it's happening. Like my stomach hurts at the end of streams. Zink, welcome, welcome to the, welcome to the chat. Yeah, Savvy, warm up, warm up before and then practice little things. So if you notice that you're having a difficulty going between two different, two different intervals. La -da. Like if I don't put any, any effort into that and if I don't put any, any muscle into it, it's gonna, and you're going to feel like you need to scoop up into the note where it should be. And that's all going to be all. Gonna be, and there's, there's, there's going to be hard lines that you're singing too, where you're going to have to try to be mindful about conserving the air that's in your body. Um, what's the song that I could play? They say that I should wear the crown. So I'm usually trying to save my air for the middle of crown when I want to be adding more vibrato at the end of that at the end of that sentence. I say I know I can't be king when my house and that that's a big interval. So I'm gonna have to think mindfully when I'm about to get to that part when my house and it's gonna be it's gonna be my abdomen that's gonna push that note to the next to the next interval when my house of cards falls down i know that i should just keep moving but i can't breathe I wrote those passages I knew that they were long passages so I knew that I have to take a big breath right before them and then I'm gonna have to slow release the air whenever that big line's coming up so sometimes we find that there's certain songs that are really hard to sing and it's just because it does it takes an enormous amount of air and so you have to learn and practice just slow releasing the air so you should always kind of be in that slow release mode where it's like I can't breathe But I know that I'm going to need extra air for this next interval. I can't breathe. And everyone's telling me to breathe. Lisa Pakasith. Hello. We're getting weird. We're getting weird. We're talking about breathing today and everybody is being hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> literally literally you can't you gotta slow release that air did i write it sitting down i did i can't breathe when i'm sitting down at all ever <laughs> no i just find it very difficult to be able to actually use my my diaphragm muscle if i'm sitting down i can't breathe Use those opportunities in between phrases to take as much air as you can. Sometimes the mountain it wins. Maybe I wasn't built to move mountains. And 
and it also it really helps to to keep doing those scales to push as far down as you can and as far up as you can because it helps with the transition between your voices so when you guys are talking about the the falsetto the hardest part and the part that takes the most air is when you're switching between the two voices too like this is going to be my chest voice maybe oh wait maybe i wasn't built to move mountains sometimes the mountain wins maybe i wasn't built to move mountains and that i had to switch to my head voice for the two Maybe I wasn't built to move mountains. And so I always need a big breath at the end of that phrase because it takes it takes extra air to switch between those two voices just for one word. Why did I do myself do that to myself when I when I wrote that song? I don't know. I don't know. To sum up, you should breathe. It helps you live better. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Yeah, that's 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 the overview of what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, they will help when you're singing Baby Shark for sure. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't play banjo. I have a banjo guitar here. It's a six-string banjo that's tuned like a banjo, so it's I'm I'm cheating. I was getting better and better at transitioning to my falsetto than school hit slip right back down it's just again it's just like the gym like if you're lifting weights it's gonna go well and if you take a break then you're gonna you're gonna go back a little bit but that's okay school's important peanut lemon so i'm i'm proud of you maybe it's just a case of when you're i don't know if you've got any audiobooks that you're listening to for school when you're when you're laying down just spend five or ten minutes a day just pushing that textbook because that's just that will help you with your falsetto real talk how does your technique change when singing different contemporary styles in a more clean and controlled sound wouldn't sound as authentic? Uh, do you mean like if you're singing with a growl or, or if you're singing metal? <laughs> because the breathing is still the same. So that's why everything always comes down to breathing. That's always the first thing to fix. Because even when you're thinking about pitch... A lot of people are criticized on pitch when it comes to singing. It's like, oh, well, they're just a little bit flat all the time. But that's, again, that's just not enough muscle being used to to put the sound out. So the technique for breathing is going to be the exact same. But in terms of adding a growl and things, it's just different things you're doing. And there's a lot of really, really impressive metal singers that are classically trained. And they do a great job of protecting their vocal cords while still doing screamo. We needed drama training. Yay! I'm super happy to help. No, it's it's so important. Uh, and I and I I just did a public speaking class for for my students this week, and we just talk about we talk we 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 have a session on vocal health, because when you think about even coming across as a confident speaker, you're doing a, a speech at a wedding, you're going for a job interview, you're presenting something to a new client or you're presenting something for your boss and you're looking for a raise or you're up for a promotion it's really important that you come across in a confident way and and that really where you produce the sound of your voice has a big impact on that what are we what are we sharing what what are we passing around all i only saw last from savvy spark was baby shark and then the poofy saying can i grab a cup please i'm like of baby shark <laughs> is that what you're having <clears throat> oh strand largo welcome back to the chat yeah we're talking about breathing for singing we're talking danny screamo Rawr. that's it that's all i got <laughs> i don't i don't screamo well it's not it's not a talent of mine just send it to Ottawa under Poofy. Just write Poofy and Ottawa on the package. Just share your grindcore project. Do it, Nick. Do it. Which muscles? Yeah, so you don't want to feel any strain here. You don't want to feel any strain in your vocal cords. 
So it's going to be this muscle that, that should be hurting. So when you're breathing in, practice forcing the air out with this muscle too. Even if you have to use your hand at first and you're just forcing it out, you're going to breathe in. And you'll start to feel, it, it should feel like a little bit like you're doing a bit of an ab crunch. But just practice with that textbook at home. Push that up and down. Five minutes a day, ten minutes a day. And after a few months, you're going to get more and more used to what that feels like. Savvy's bringing cocoa. That's awesome. That's amazing. I'm ready. Chris, hey, welcome. Toss a coin, your baby shark. <laughs> that sounds like a terrible mashup. Wimbacker. I'm going to request air dog. <laughs> <laughs> no the tutorial's not over grossmeister you can't <laughs> oh my goodness will it will it help me sound less sus yes absolutely if you use your diaphragm and you produce the sound of your voice with your chest voice then no one will think you're the imposter in among us no one i guarantee it or your money back. No. <laughs> I don't know. You're pretty sus already, Poofy. So I think it's going to take more than just uh, more than just chest voice. Uh, more of the muscles around your rib cage. So a little bit higher. Like the navel would be down there. So you want it to be a little bit higher near, near your rib cage. There you go. <laughs> Popo. So funny. Do we have any more questions about, about singing that I can help you guys with? Turbo Lines, good evening. Welcome. Take an extra large. Just mailing cocoa around the world. I love it. I love it. Personally attacked. <laughs> oh my goodness. And the other thing is don't drink milk. Don't do it. Don't drink milk right before. Um, lemon and mint also act as astringent, so it helps with those with those natural mucuses that we have in our bodies. Gross, gross. Danny said mucus on stream. Ew, but we have them, and so those those can help clear. And especially if we're nervous before we're singing or nervous before we're streaming, you'll find that you want to you want to clear your throat more often. And that's just because all your muscles are constricting in your body when you're nervous or when you're stressed out. So if you've already got that natural mucus there, and if you're one of those people who usually feels like you have to clear your throat all the time, uh, try to have some mint tea or some lemon right right before you have to go on stream. And for those of you that feel like you need 800 glasses of water while you're streaming because you have the inverse, whereas everything's really dry and you feel like you're going to die of dehydration when you start streaming, have a teaspoon of honey right before. It really helps with with that feeling when you're when you're feeling really nervous. No sugar, no acid, no coffee, all of those things you want to avoid. Definitely nothing carbonated. <laughs> your body, your body does not like that. <laughs> but yes, whiskey, just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit. There's only a little bit. It's only a tiny bit. It's not a full mug. It's never a full mug. And it's just something that, that helps clear me out because I also, I'm asthmatic and I have lots of allergies and I can't take medication. So so we just have a tiny bit of unicorn whiskey, just a tiny bit, just a little bit, because it's good. <laughs> it's good, and it's also, it, it clears me out, at least. So sad, no milk. No, because it makes you stuffy. All Everything with lactose in it, so try to avoid milk and cheese, only before you're singing, or before something really important, like a job interview, or, or things like that. <laughs> I don't eat dairy. That's good. Milk was a bad choice. <laughs> you guys, you were so hilarious in our community games on Friday. I just about died. So, so good. Yeah, before you go on stage, Edward, don't don't have any milk. It'll help a lot. You'll be surprised. Okay. Oh, Lisa, I feel your allergic pain. Yeah. And antihistamines at all, like cold medication, anything that's just like nothing to other people. It makes me super loopy. Like I can't function as a person. Hmm. How hard do you think it'd be to sing in lots of different styles and not sound super fake and forcing it? 
I think it's just a case of mastering those different techniques. Like, like the rock growl and, and, and the, the things that people do. I think it's just a case of talking to somebody who does that really well and does that in a way that's protecting their voice. Because if you look at cases like uh, the lead singer of Disturbed, I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on his name, Adele. Like there's been lots of people who have these powerful, incredible voices that need to go for surgery because they're getting nodes on their vocal cords. And it's just because they're not protecting their vocal cords with what they're doing. So as long as you talk to somebody who's doing metal singing and they're doing it and they've been trained to do that in a way that protects their body and you learn the technique behind that, you can sing in tons of different styles. Like I'm trained classically. I wasn't singing pop. That wasn't what I was trained to do. So I don't like singing opera, but that's what I had to sing for four years to, to train. So you can sing in lots of different styles. You just have to learn learn the techniques behind each. I don't think you, you'll sound fake or like you're forcing it. Have 